Hello, hello. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for being here today. We've been uh, working on this uh, technology for a number of years, and uh, we're just now uh, starting to kind of share this idea and really the, the technology uh, to everyone. And we actually need everyone's help to really uh, push it forward. And, and what it is is it's the next layer of the internet. The first layer of the internet was an internet of communication. Now the next layer after that is a internet of energy. Imagine if we had a, a world that could actually operate on renewable energy, coupled with energy storage and do peer-to-peer -peer energy exchange. We've seen this happen in the telephone world. Actually, any, everything that the internet has touched has transformed it. And one of the last ones is the, the biggest business in the world, which is the energy business. So, internet of energy. Did, did you know that there is no plan on how to run the world on renewable energy. There's no plan. There's no plan for us on how we're going to live sustainably and healthily into the future. Now, this also occurred to another man, Mr. Fuller, back in the 60s. And he ran a project called The World Game. The World Game was a play out of all the different scenarios that society could go through. And what the iterations turned out was that it was not food or water or politics that ended up as the, the main medium. It was energy. It's power. So, and what he envisioned was a, a world of renewable energy, all interconnected with energy storage, where everyone can be their own little micro-utility where everyone can be their own little energy business. You know, I think what we're standing on the front here is uh, the potential that we're, well, no, the reality that we're entering the first human race. This first human race is a global collective effort to go ahead and put in a renewable energy system. Imagine if we can use like a medium like Facebook to go ahead and do something a little bit more than just check up on our social interactions, but actually help build, design, operate a renewable energy system. And so that's what we're, we're moving towards. We're really hoping here that humans will go ahead and uh, win the world game. And how do we go ahead and win or initiate this world game? It's through energy consciousness. Also, energy awareness. You know, we interact with electricity every single day. And so what I'm gonna do part here today is actually go over how the electrical grid works and operates so we can get a little insight there. And it was like, a, I was at a point as doing a postdoc at MIT when I realized I did not understand the difference between power and energy. I was using the words interchangeably. And I really looked at it, I'm like, wait a second, no, there's something going on here. And also, I was developing batteries. We've grown up in a power world. So we've only seen power until we started dealing with cell phones and laptops. Then we got to energy. So here's a, here's a little tutorial. Power is instantaneous. Energy is power for a duration of time. Go ahead and put all that science and stuff back to the side. And actually, let's ask some of the hard questions, which are also the easy questions. Just two. I want everyone to ask yourselves, what do I want to do and how long do I want to do it, right? If we can all answer those questions, we can basically have our energy system design itself. And that's some of the software that we've developed. What do I want to do says how much power I need. If I want to run a 100 watt light bulb, I can do that and I need 100 watts of power. But if I want to do that for two hours, I need 100, 200 watt hours of energy. So again, this is a difference between power and energy. I'm not asking you to actually comprehend this or let this all sink in right now, but just know that there's a difference here. And the fact that we don't understand the difference leads to our kind of energetic blindness. The same thing that we don't know what's on the other side of that electrical outlet when we plug into it. And so now we need a little precursor or tutorial on how the grid works. How does the grid work right now? There's coal and gas, 
generators that go ahead and send electricity to the grid and to the homes. And then those coal and gas generators actually send it to many, many, many homes. We probably have like a, a generator for every one to 200,000 people here in the United States. But also notice that those arrows are just one direction. Getting a little deeper, that, that coal and gas generation is generated at very high voltages and comes all the way down through substations and transformers to your home to where you plug in at 110 volts. Now there is a level of bi-directionality here, but it's in the, at the business level of the utility grid, but we don't really have access to that, not yet. And you can see it's still one directional to the homes. Now, new paradigm. We're gonna save the planet by running it on solar. Well, that's kind of hard, because how do we do that at nighttime? We need batteries. I've dedicated the past decade of my life to developing battery technologies to get batteries to live really long and be really valuable. And what we've iterated to is that we actually need more than just batteries. We actually need the software to go ahead and operate those batteries so everyone can be their own little micro utility. And we can go ahead and look at the evolution of the electrical grid in parallel to the evolution of the computer infrastructure. And so the thesis that I'm trying to get past here right now is that the internet and the power grid are gonna merge together into an energy network. And we can say, see some similar trends. You know, computers first arrived on campuses and then it went to centralized power because it was better to buy a shot than the whole bottle. But then all of a sudden, a very weird freak of nature happened when the personal computer was introduced. It didn't have to be introduced. We didn't need it. It was fine to say at the central system, but some very smart people did introduce it and it changed everything. It launched the internet of communication. Now imagine if we can do that for the power system. And that's what we're proposing. Actually, that's what we're building, the hardware and the software to do that. Yeah, yeah, it freaked me out too to realize that there was no energy storage on the grid. There's a very little, right? Just enough power is made for everyone to use it. There is no storage. And that allows the system to be centralized and also allows the system to be susceptible to blackouts and going down. Now, um, imagine if everyone had a little bit of energy storage. Well, you would be able to go ahead and be autonomous and interconnected at the same time. Here's a couple of analogies, but I'll even press it, say it might not, might not even be an analogy, but they're all kind of the same thing. Imagine if you had to spend all the money as soon as you got it, right? No bank accounts, but you said that that is how we live with power right now. That is how we grew up and that's what we know until cell phones and laptops. And we know how important it is to charge those. And we know how valuable it is to charge those sometimes. And if we can give that power from our cell phones and laptops to other people when they need it, that'd be pretty cool too. I mean, you can. And then also the analogy kind of drifts into computers. What we're really doing here is we're looking at how can we have a computer with a CPU and not a hard drive? Well, you can't. You need data storage. You need economic storage. We need energy storage. And at the highest echelons of uh, government and society, money exists at that second level, but really it's power, right? Electrical power is personal power is political power. And we need a way for everyone to be able to store it and exchange and do peer-to-peer -peer energy. So everyone will, under, will recognize that little outlet thing there. We plug into it every day. It's called an outlet. But what if it was called a let? It was an inlet and an outlet. And we can simply do that by adding some energy storage, that's a little system that we developed right there, on the load side. And now what do we have? We have the ability to turn those arrows around and go both directions. We have the ability to go ahead and do peer-to-peer -peer energy exchange. Here, you can't really see this picture on the top, but that's a picture of the US electrical grid. And notice, the picture below is the daily traffic at Facebook in one day. A much more highly connected system. Now here's two maps. The map on the far side in the black background is a map of the internet and of all of its interconnections. And how old is this thing? 20, 30 years? Now the map on the left, that's a map of the US electrical grid. 
It's very tree and branched and not very interconnected at all. Imagine if we can have an electrical grid, you know, driven by the internet, that we can have such a high level of interconnectivity. How much is this going to cost and how long is it going to take and what's the value of it, right? Well, there, again, there's no plan on how to run the world on renewable energy. We need this, right? There is, there's a lot of development going on and basically a nonstop machine on solar financing right now. If we can do, move from solar power financing to solar energy financing and make full like micro utilities, we can really move this whole process forward fast in a highly parallel fashion. And so right now, the, the all, all the energy in the world costs us about $6 trillion a year. Now, if everyone used electricity like Americans do, that'd be $20 trillion a year that we would spend. Now, for everyone to have their own little micro utility, that would cost $80 trillion. Well, do you know what this means? For a four-year investment, we can win the human game, or the world game. For a four-year investment, we can have a distributed, renewable, networked energy grid. So, but then there's the next step. How long would it take to build it? Remember, there's no plan. So, nothing beats a good plan, except for a better plan. When they first started looking at how long it was going to take to put a cell phone network into India, they saw it was going to take 100 years. Then they came up with a plan. It took five, right? And so what's this worth? <laughs> it's the value of like continuing living here. There's, a, there's an internal benefit of being able to like generate your own energy and use it and balance it. But there's all the external benefit too. This is a win-win, right? Why not? Why don't we do this? Well, we are. We're building a company. We're taking Buckminster Fuller's idea and fulfilling it all the way through. And we definitely need everyone's help to kind of walk into the, the, the next level of uh, consciousness and will be this energy consciousness, this energy awareness. You know, become a, an energy operator. Over the next couple of months, uh, we'll be releasing some web technologies that will allow you to have a, an energy account where you can bring in your energy data from your smart meters and start processing it, right? This is not a central system. We are going to do this in a highly parallel fashion and to roll these systems out. So with that, I just want to say, hey, let's start the first human race and deploy and install and operate a distributed renewable energy grid. Thank you.